Hi gang, Bob Bobing here with the Mystery Project, presenting the completion of the first flight of Peggy Delaney, written by James W. Nichol. Peggy's daughter Amber is more like her mother than she wants to admit, and this becomes dangerously apparent tonight. Second Chances, Episode 13 of Peggy Delaney, starring Kyra Harper as Peggy. Hello there. You've reached Peggy Delaney, Toronto Tribune. If you have something confidential you want to pass on, just leave your name and number. The walls have ears. I'll get back to you. If you're calling to give me fulsome, unqualified praise for my columns, please feel free. If you're calling to scream at me, fascist, communist, cop-loving, cop-hating, pro-lesbian, anti-lesbian, crypto Bay Street swamp pig, go for it. After all, this is a quasi-democracy. Hi there, you. Hi. You're on time. Uh-huh. You know, Amber, you have the afternoon off. You should be home studying for tomorrow's exam. Uh, tomorrow's just algebra. Huh. Besides, it's a lot more important. Did you say important or perverted? Oh, God. You're not going to be like that, are you? Can you smoke in this coffee shop? I don't know. Mm. <sighs> you promised me you'd try to be objective. And I will. I promise. Again. This whole thing, it means a lot to you, doesn't it? Fairness means a lot to me. Is that it? Of course. Yes. Wow. I'm proud. I'm really, really proud of you. But still, of all the human rights causes, you could have gotten yourself involved in it. Yeah, like human rights violations in Colombia? That's a good one. Or child labor in India? Perfect. Mom, that's the whole point. I mean, this one's here. It's right in our faces. I mean, it's right in my face every day, just down from our school. And I can't stand how inhumane and nasty and, and unfair people can be. All right? All right. So... What's this guy's name again? You know his name. Oh, I keep forgetting. Chester. Chester Davis. And the name of this organization? Convicted Person Support Network. Great. Paying your debt to society, as the courts define it, and as society at large defines it, are sometimes two very different things. As in Chester Davis's case. Yes. It's a mess. Unconscionable. A disgrace. Mom hasn't gone over to see for herself yet. But you will, won't you, Mom? Yes. Of course. It's really disgusting. All these people marching up and down with their awful signs. The kids from our school go over there at lunch hour. It's, it's like when there's a fight and everybody runs up, like, screaming and laughing. Watching somebody kick somebody in the head. It's, it's that bloodthirsty. We're grateful that Amber and her group are trying to make a difference. Mr. Davis is extremely grateful. Ah. Uh-huh. Except we haven't really accomplished anything. At first we tried to talk to those people, but they wouldn't listen. They just screamed at us, so... Now we're counter-demonstrating. But there's only, like, about five of us. And that's where I met Amber, on the battle line. She was just slipping a piece of paper under the door. Pardon? It's just our phone number, in case Jessica wanted to call. I was on my way out. I had been visiting Mr. Davis. So I listened to her. I was very impressed. I invited her in. Well, that part I knew. The phone number's interesting. I wanted to tell him how our group felt about everything. I didn't know how else to get in touch with him. He, he's afraid to answer the door. Anyway, I, I just thought if you wrote something ob- objective about Chester, his situation, then people might understand how he feels. So I asked Edna what she thought. And I thought it was a terrific idea. Or not. Uh, depending. I, I never know how my columns will turn out until they turn out, if you know what I mean. I, I can't give you any guarantee. No, of course not. I wasn't expecting any. Where is he? Well, would you prefer to see him alone or with me? He's waiting. Next door. Alone. It was 19th. 
And how long did they put you away that time? Did you receive treatment? Three years, and yes, I received some treatment. Well, what was it, the same thing? Uh, exposing yourself and sexual fondling? Yeah. How old were the kids? Six, six or seven years old, I think. Girls? Boys? Both. Right. And then um, the one that put you away for 12 years. A boy. And? Rape. <clears throat> Mind if I smoke? Sure, you can smoke. So, how old were you this time? Twenty-five. And you were still living with your father, working in his hardware store in Simcoe? That's right, yes. And you received more treatment? I received a variety of treatment for a long period of time. Group therapy, individual, aversion therapy, drug therapy, which I'm still on. You know, I would have gladly chosen castration, but they said, no, it wasn't available for me. Right. So this is the problem, isn't it? Yeah. You received treatment before and reoffended, and more seriously that time. So why should anyone believe that the treatment you received the second time will work any better? Well, because it was much more comprehensive, and, and it went on for an ex extended period of time, a long period of time, because... Also, I know how I feel. Yeah. Well, say I'm a parent living in that neighborhood. Suddenly the police inform me that a convicted pedophile has just moved into his father's house down the street. Mm -hmm. You, Chester Davis, living three doors down from my little kids. Chester, I am not going to give you the benefit of any doubt. I just want you to hell away from my kids, and the faster the better. Do you understand that? Yes, but it is irrational. No. No, it's not. It's absolutely rational. Whether the chances are one in five, one in twenty, or one in a thousand, it's absolutely rational. Do you understand that? I understand. I understand everything. I, I only meant irrational... In the sense that removing me from um, the community, from this community, does not supply a solution, okay? Because I have to move somewhere, don't I? The only other options are, are, are suicide or, uh, I don't know, living on a deserted island or reoffending to gain some relief from this. This? People marching up and down, monitoring me whenever I leave the house, whether I'm on foot, I'm in a cab, following, screaming. Oh, yeah, hate mail. Uh, it's negative energy of all kinds. So, what do you feel is the logical solution then? Well, I would be very stupid to be the object of so much hatred, both inside prison and outside, and not understand why. But, hey, they said I was free. So, I want my freedom. Give me my freedom. Charlie, a cop. Hello, Miss Delaney. Fancy meeting you here. Yeah. Hi, Nick. You look pensive. Oh? Oh, just thinking about a street in Cabbage Town one summer night a long time ago. I saw this scrawny guy get kicked half to death. He'd been caught with his pants down, literally, with this little kid. News travels fast on those streets. 
There was quite a crowd. Yeah? Well, you know what they say about civilization being a thousand miles wide and an inch thick? I was that little kid. No kidding. Uh-huh. It was okay. I mean, I was okay. He hadn't gotten around to doing much. I have a kind of reflex reaction whenever that subject comes up, you know? I would imagine. Remember that guy? You did a couple of stories on him. The released pedophile living on Banting Avenue. All the protesters. Chester Davis. Front page for two days. Amber would like civilization to be a bit thicker than one inch. Her group is counter-demonstrating. Really? Really. She even talked me into interviewing him the other day. Distressing? Yeah, a little. Does Amber know about the... No. Uh... No, I haven't told her. Why not? Because it's irrelevant to her defending Davis on the basis of his human rights. So why complicate things? I would have thought a daughter and mother would have... No. You know what she said last night? Just because one person's sick, why do we all have to become sick, too? And, and she has all these stats on sexual offenders. After two years or more of treatment, recidivism is actually really low, or so they show. She thinks there must be some middle ground where Chester can continue to live with his father and the community can still feel safe with him around. And Chester, he, he talks about wanting to be totally free, as if that's possible given what he's done. Right. She scares me, Nick. What if he does do something to some neighborhood kid? How's Amber going to feel? Devastated. But hopefully she won't lose faith in herself or the world. And she won't change. Yeah. I still find it remarkable that you wouldn't say anything Can to it, her. Can Nick? Okay. Still the Lone Ranger. I thought AA would change you, soften you up. <laughs> Did you? So, how's it going? Good. It's going good. Really? Yeah. You know what the big stumbling block was? No. God. I knew AA was about God. Well, there were some things you just had to hand over to him, like the idea you could control your own drinking. Well, I'd outgrown God a long time ago. <laughs> the thought of me praying. It was embarrassing. It made me cringe. God as you understand him. That's how they put it. A definition which came as a relief to an ex-Catholic. It's working. Somehow. I cried for two days straight. I don't know what it is. But it's working. Two coffees and one phone call for Ms. Peggy Delaney. Oh? From whom? Did not say. Oh, my God. It's better than it was. Oh, my God. Mom, I'm not dead. You've got a broken arm. No, I haven't. Dislocated thumb. When I hit the sidewalk, I put my hand out. When I looked down, my thumb was pointing back up my arm. Oh. And... Six stitches in her mouth. Eight. Who did it? I don't know. Of course you know. Some idiot. This guy. On the other side from my school, but I'm not telling you who. Why not? Because you'll just get involved and make some big scene out of it. And I don't want you involved, okay? No. Is that why you call Bernie and not me? Uh-huh. Oh. Yes, Sammy, I see you too. Hi. Hi, I'm back. Hi, Mom. So, did Bernie stay long after I left? No, he had to go back to his office, too. Get your files? Mm hmm. I can work here at home for a couple of days. But I'm feeling a lot better now. I've got exams. I don't need to stay home for two. Well, you'll stay until I talk to the school, anyway, and... Oh. Uh... Hello? Um, uh, you remember Chester, Mom? Uh-huh. I hope this is not an intrusion of any kind. No, no, it's not. Um, 
Chester called me. He said what happened when I was outside his house. I mean, when when all those kids were... Uh, he ganged up on her. It was terrible. And I should have done something. I was just there at the window watching. I, I, I'm sorry. No, no, you did the right thing. You shouldn't have come out. They, they just would have gone even more crazy, you know. Yes, well, what exactly are you doing here, Chester? It, he needs a favor, Mom. He left his house because it's, it's so terrible there. His poor father's so upset with all the yelling, and he can't even go out, so Chester's moving where no one will know who he is. I'm just driving him to another city tomorrow, but uh, he needs some place to stay. Tonight. What? You've been at your father's place all this time. Why, why not spend one more night with him? He told me to get out. He told him to get out. He has nowhere else to go. He had to take a taxi to Eaton Center and then lose some people who are following him in the store. And then get a cab out here. It, it's awful, Mom. We have to help. Well, is that your suitcase over there? Yeah. I'll take you to a hotel. Mother. No. Chester's done nothing wrong. He's served his sentence. He's supposed to be free. Don't, don't treat him like some, like a piece of... It's, it's all right, Amber. It isn't. Where do you expect him to sleep? On the couch. Huh. Chester, uh, could you excuse Amber and me for a moment? We're just going to go on in here and uh, have a little talk. Sure. Go back in the living room, Chester. Yeah. Thank you, Amber. Look, I don't think you understand the situation. I understand the situation. You think he's going to do something to us, which means you don't know anything about people like Chester. And you're just being ridiculous. Or you think that even though he's paid for his crime, he should still be rejected and, and treated like dirt? Why, Amber? Why is he so important? Because it's not fair. It's not just about fairness. It's more than that. What is it? Mother, I'm trying to do something decent for somebody. Why would you trust my judgment? And why would you help me? It's, it's important. To me, for once in your life, do something for somebody else. Do something for me. Okay. What? It, it, it's one o'clock. You woke me up. You're always waking me up. How, how's Amber? Is there something wrong? Oh, I don't know. Guess what? What? She gave Chester Davis my number. He called after you left. He saw what happened to her. He's here now. He's sleeping on our couch. Hello? Are you kidding me? No. He's going to Niagara Falls tomorrow. With this Edna person from the Convicted Person Support Network. He's going to relocate on the QT. Amber wants to go, too. I'm lying here in the dark in my bed, stiff as a board, with the door open. Oh, my God. He's going to do something? No. No, I don't think so. God. Bernie, why is this guy so important to her? You know what I think? What? He's been rejected by everybody, and he's alone in the world. And maybe she feels alone in the world. And I, I rejected her, Bernie, when she was just a baby. L -l 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 Listen, she's just trying to do something good, all right? She's just a, a good person trying to do good. Don't complicate things. And keep your eye on the door. Bernie. Uh-huh. That's why she called you. When she was hurt. That's why she didn't call me. Oh, it's a lovely day. I mean, I get much snow in Vancouver. Not in the city, but you just have to look up to see it on the mountain. Oh, Vancouver's one of my favorite places. <laughs> yeah, I go back there after exams. That's, that's where I come from. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I live with my dad out there. I'm just visiting Mom for a semester. Aren't I, Mom? Well, I'm not sure. 
Maybe the whole school here. It, it's negotiable. With Dad? I, I don't think so. With you. When I was little, uh, before my mom died, Mom and Dad used to bring me on picnics to Niagara Falls all the time. And that's why I thought it would be nice if I could live here. Well, I've got a list of rooming houses, Chester. All I need to do is pick up a city map. We shouldn't have any problem finding some place. I want to thank you. All of you, especially Amber, for, like, for everything. <laughs> Smoke? No. Mine? No. Where's Anne? Oh, she wanted to have a closer look at the clothes. Edna's still in the store, bought the map. Now she's looking for a souvenir for her little nephew. Yeah. Hey. Peggy? Yeah? I didn't come here to live. Oh? No. I was going to give this envelope to Ed, and I did. I'll change my mind. I, I think I'll give it to you instead. What is it? The truth. What do you mean, the truth? The truth. Open up. Well, it looks... Uh, it's a map, isn't it? Uh-huh. Did you draw this? Uh-huh. I'm the only person in the world who could... Go ahead, read what it says. There's a date. May 14th, 1986. And you've marked the falls, the river, and a park. Right. Down the gorge, 100 feet, standing tree, hollow inside, Tammy Stewart, five years old, missing girl. Oh, God. You know what it means? Oh, God. It's because of Amber. Because she believes in me. How can I accept Amber's trust in me and still be dirty? So for once in my life, I want to be brave. Oh, poor Amber. She thought that being punched and mauled was all the price she had to pay for me to try to help justice be done. You know what? No good thing comes without its pain. Does it, Peggy? No. Justice will be done. You knew there was something else going on with him all the time, and, and I didn't see it. No, Amber. I didn't see it either. I should have told you before. The reason I was so resistant to you getting involved. This, uh, 
this guy tried to do something to me when I was a little kid. What? He, he just pulled my clothes off. Nothing much had happened when he got caught by these two men, and it got really violent. Oh, Mom. I should have told you before. I'm sorry. I think I'm so stupid, you know. I, I don't know how I think you'll be closer to me if I can't open up to you. Yeah. I don't know either. <laughs> yeah, right. Because a drunk has to have her secrets. She needs her secrets for a reason to drink. I intend to do better. Mom? What? I've been thinking. When I go out to Vancouver for Christmas, maybe... Maybe I'll ask Dad about staying the whole school year. Here, with you. You could talk to him, too. And explain maybe, um... Why that's a good idea? Do you think that, um, that that's a good idea? Oh, yes. Yes, I do. This has been Second Chances. In the cast today, you heard Kyra Harper as Peggy, Katarina Scorsone as Amber, Nicholas Campbell as Chester, John Stalker as Bernie, Janet Lane Green as Edna, J.W. Carroll as Nick, and William Colgate as Charlie. The music was composed and conducted by Milan Kimlicka. The recording engineer was Drago Grantich. Sound effects were by Matt Wilcott. Colleen Woods was the associate producer. The program was produced and directed in Toronto by Bill Howell, the executive producer of The Mystery Project. Cassettes of this Peggy Delaney series are now available at all bookstores in your neighborhood, as well as your local library. I'm Bob Boving, thanking you for listening and inviting your comments. See you next week.